Imagine leaving the Smith Center in Chapel Hill for Durham to face your arch rival. It's only 10 miles, but there's plenty of time to think. When does your heart begin to beat faster? When you realize it's number three against number five, or it's for first place in the ACC? How do you feel when you arrive at Cameron, a place most teams dread, but where you have won three straight? The short trip is over, but the real fun hasn't even started. Welcome to Wednesday Night Hoops, presented by Disney Parks and part of Rivalry Week, presented by Cisco. It's the number three Tar Heels against the number five Blue Devils. The 40th time they meet when both are in the top 10. To the winner tonight goes first place in the Atlantic Coast Conference and the inside track to a number one seed come tournament time. Good evening, everybody. Mike Patrick along with Dick Vitale. It's great to have you with us. If you're North Carolina, the way you're playing right now, you come into this game believing you can win. If you're Duke, the way you're playing right now, you come into this game maybe hoping you can win. That's a huge difference, Dick. No doubt, Mike. You know what's really amazing about this matchup? Five of the last six times, the home team has lost. That's unbelievable. North Carolina's won three in a row on this floor. Also, number one seed. You got number one in the ACC. The number one <laughs> offense, North Carolina, against the number one defense in the ACC. Duke. And then you got the star watch here, Kyla Hansbro, trying to become the number one scorer in the ACC. And Kyle Sigler's got to find his touch only shooting 28% in the last three games. There are more stars involved as well. Heather Cox has more on that. Heather. Indeed, at this time of the season when teams need other stars to emerge, it just might be two high school buddies turned rivals that turn into game changers tonight. UNC's Wayne Ellington and Duke's Gerald Henderson have been best friends since they were 14, but are now rivals carrying their own team when it counts, both averaging about 19 points in conference play. They talked over the weekend but have since put a self-imposed ban on any interaction. But will there be much trash talking on the court tonight, Mike? Not according to Wayne telling me Gerald can't talk trash. I'm three and one against him. The record is always a really good silencer. Here's the starting lineup for North Carolina at 21 and two, an incredibly talented group in the starters. But with the lack of depth, they have to play more and produce more. Wayne Ellington has found his shot. For Duke, 20 and three, three guards, including Greg Paulus making only his third start of the year. He started the last game, produced a season high 18 points. Mike Krzyzewski, the number one active winningest coach in college basketball. And Roy Williams, who owns the number one winningest percentage of all active coaches in college basketball. Hall of Famers, both. Two quality coaches, quality teams. The fans are all excited. North Carolina and Duke. It doesn't get better or any finer, baby, than this matchup in intercollegiate athletics. Carolina controls the opening tip. Loss in the point guard has been brilliant. Mike, the big matchup will be inside. Can they handle Hansbro on the post? Kicks it out. Thompson with the jump shot. Deion Thompson, who most nights is the fourth or fifth scorer. The guy that's been on fire, Wayne Ellington, has been shooting like our Hubert Davis. He's been on fire. This is Shire, who had been in a prolonged shooting slump, may have come out of it against Miami. That would be good news for Duke. Backdoor cut, Henderson. Got by Green. Great backdoor with the overplay. Defensive transition, deflection. Henderson's been playing brilliantly the last four weeks. He's been one of the premier players in the conference and even the nation. Look how quick North Carolina tries to push the ball down court. They never let the defense rest. Last two games, you spoke about Lawson playing well. 15 assists and zero turnovers. That's pretty good for a point guard. That's tremendous. 
Ellington may have a tougher time tonight getting wide open shots against that Duke man to man. And there's Thompson who has hit the first two buckets. See the advantage with the size on the interior certainly goes to North Carolina. But fatigue can play a part in this game with the depth factor that Duke has in the heat in this play. Henderson down the lane. Great job of keeping the ball away from Hansborough. Henderson has four. He's so explosive, has that great first step. Reach in, it's going to be a foul on Henderson. Mike Krzyzewski, I thought he did a great job in getting his kids as you watch the backdoor cut, catch the defensive players staring at the ball, and then as the drive to the goal, protect the ball with the left hand. That's a big time move. I thought Mike Krzyzewski did a great job when they went down 16 to Miami, get blown out in that game with Clemson by 27. It could have been a nightmare psychologically. His really? kids regrouped and came back and won that game over a good Miami team where, Roger, where Jack McClinton was on fire at 34. Inbounds to Lawson. Thompson didn't want that shot. It's the best starting five in America, Mike. Hands pro. When he gets in that deep, nobody's going to stop him. Well, the defense also stretches because of their ability to make the perimeter shot. Green on one wing and on the other wing, Ellington. Sloppy ball handling by Henderson. Green on the run and got it. Hansbro has now passed Dickey Hemrick as the number two leading scorer in the history of the ACC. Chasing J.J. Reddick. One of those years Hemrick played, Wake Forest was in the Southern Conference. Singler. When he, Carolina gets good defense from its guards, they're virtually impossible to beat, aren't they? They really had trouble defensively against Maryland, put 91 on the board, but they played so well defensively against a Virginia team and that they gave a great effort in that first half. Shire got caught up in the air and threw it away. The second turnover. Let's get more from Heather Cox. Well, that Clemson loss, Coach K said, was not a loss. It was an annihilation, quote, devastating. It could have started a downward spiral that might not have stopped. He said to his team afterwards, you have to have guts to do what's necessary. You can't be scared. He said, I was tough on the team because it was the biggest loss we had in 20 years, but I couldn't beat them up too much. I also must build them up. We'll see if that strategy works come tonight. Well, one. they have always responded, Heather. There's Ellington to the basket. That's the first missed basket, but because of the foul, it won't even count. They're doubling up every time Hansbro touches the ball inside, trying to get it out of that double team. As you look at the Blue Devils this year, the numbers. Mike Krzyzewski with a wry smile on the foul call. Mike's really been happy for one factor. His team has not shot the ball really well. Offensively, not getting great shooting out of Shire and Singler, two guys you expect. But yet, they've been able to still survive because of their defensive effort. They have really played brilliantly defensively most of the year, other than the breakdown in the game Jay Billis and the guys had down here with Clemson, when it was a total breakdown. Ellington makes both free throws. North Carolina has not missed, and they're up 10-4. to four. And don't They're take a it. really good free throw shooting you team. You know, Mike, I don't want to take anything away from Clemson. They were brilliant, Mike. Shire. He's Sh going to be huge in this game, I think. Shire and Singler were out early shooting. The SNS guys really working on their shot. Thompson. He's three for three. They're going down the interior with guys Thompson and certainly Hansbro is going to be a major factor on that interior. Henderson may have rushed that. Ellington back the other way. Tough pull up jump shot and he missed. Can you imagine Ellington and Henderson playing on the same high school team? Oh, think wow. they were pretty tough to beat. Bad pass by Henderson. Picked off by Ellington. Two on one. Green. Ellington. Two point blank tries and they miss. Well, you got challenged on that last one with that left hand. Duke now starting Paulus over Nolan Smith. Paulus had that big game, the last game for them. Gave him a great lift against Miami. Boy, good defense by Carolina. Thompson, that's the fourth turnover. Deion Thompson in the lane. No. Bodies fly. Hansborough, the only one left standing. 
Dallas probably the easiest to do so get all night. Tyler Hansbro, who said no to Kansas, no to Missouri, and said I wanted to be a Tar Heel. How badly he stayed four years. I got a feeling Curry's going to stay four years down at Davidson. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Disney Parks, where you are invited to celebrate life's special moments. What will you celebrate? And in part by GMC, we are professional grade. Welcome back to Cameron Indoor Stadium, Carolina, with the lead over Duke early 14 to 6. Here's the way the coaches reacted during that last timeout. Roy Williams with a teaching moment. Mike Krzyzewski spent some time saying, where do we get a foul call when two of our guys are on the floor and none of theirs are? Well, two fierce competitors really go about it maybe a little differently, but they're both fierce competitors of a great understanding of their personnel and know the strengths and weaknesses of their players and know how to hide their liabilities. Look at that back to cut. Shire protected the ball, draws the foul. And right now, Roy Williams with an eight-point lead can afford to go to his bench. That's Ed Davis with his first personal foul. In case you missed it, Marcus Ginyard is done for the year. He just couldn't come back. He tried his hardest during rehab, wasn't able to do it, and they lost Will Graves to a season-ending suspension. So their depth, which they expected to be one of the strengths of this team, isn't there anymore. Well, also Zeller. Zeller, the big guy, seven-footer, broke right his wrist. The start of the year. Yeah, he's starting to practice now. They said they're going to have to make a decision. Do they play him for about 10, 12 games and look at him as a vital part in quest of a national championship? Personally, I don't think you're going to see him play this year. As a good man-to-man -man defense, Duke really gets after you. Green into the lane. He's versatile, multi-dimensional. He would have been the best six-man in basketball coming off the bench if Ginyard was on the floor, who would have been a defensive stopper on the perimeter. This is McClure. Two tips, and they got it. Lawson. No bucket, but a foul. Duke working on the offensive boards, gets that tip and that score. Hey, tomorrow you got Louisville and Notre Dame, the Fighting Irish really struggling, lost seven in a row back at home. UCLA and Arizona State, UCLA is probably playing a lot better than people really realize, really doing a terrific job. And James Harden doing a great job for Herb Sendick in Arizona State. Lawson, who leads the ACC in assists, another one of those good free throw shooters. Hansborough back in after a brief rest. The two losses North Carolina had, there was a common denominator. Lawson was not Lawson. He had nine assists and eight turnovers in those two games and really wasn't effective against BC or against Wake Forest. And you're right, that's not Lawson. It's a lot of fun up here, buddy, isn't it? Oh, it's the best. Rather be about 40 feet lower where the temperature's 40 degrees lower, but I'll take this. No complaints. Ellington with the rebound. Duke has done North Carolina a favor and turned the ball over four times early in this game. Last five games, Ellington's been really terrific. Started that game against Miami in the second half when he made seven threes. Pull up jumper is good. Deion Thompson can't miss. He has eight points. Well, wide open shot. I mean, nobody guarded him. Zubik was nowhere to be found trying to guard him out there. And he had that open look. Good head fake by Singler to get free, and he knocks it down. 
He's been really struggling. 28% in his last three games, 9 for 38. But, you know, players go through little schneids like that. Great ones don't recover. And he's a terrific player. He's had a heck of a year for them. And he'll be back. He and Shire were out here so early tonight working on their shot with that talented two coaching staff. There's the loose ball. Zubek goes to the floor. Henderson comes up. The first turnover for North Carolina in this game in over six minutes. Nolan Smith, offensive foul. That's two on Smith. He only played seven minutes against Miami that game because Paulus had come on strong. You know, you got to really salute Paulus. He loses the starting job, but he never loses that toughness as you see the charge. He kept battling, battling, and battling. You think this guy wants it? You think he wants it? That's why he's a Hall of Famer. It's all about today, today, not about what he's achieved. Zubek against Hansborough. Contact, no whistle. Lawson. What did Henderson get up? Holy cow. He's one of the premier players in America. Smith. Look at that speed. Smith wants some more PT. Playing time. He'll get it. For the loss of pushing the ball up the floor. Race horse basketball and Bobby Fraser, who has not shot the ball well all year long, although for his career he's a very good shooter, knocks that one down. He's had so many injuries, but he could be a key You're component right. to this team. Coming off the bench, giving he and Davis some quality playing time. Very smart player, very good man-to-man -man defender. Well, Daddy was a coach. Henderson, reverse. What can he do? He is so multi-dimensional. He can shoot the three. He can explode in transition. He can post you up. He's got those long arms defensively. Fraser, good pass, and Thompson has made everything. He has 10 points. Good ball movement by Carolina. Thompson said, hey, what about talking about me? I'm not a role player. I want to be a star here tonight. That great man-to-man -man defense by Duke is being chewed up by North Carolina. Zubek, good pass to McCourt, caught it a little off balance. Henderson into the lane with a hanger. He's like Barishnikov in shorts right there. Ballerina hanging in the air. Cameron Grace has explode. Duke's got to get some stops defensively. North Carolina's been getting good shots. Offensive, very efficient. Lawson against Smith, that's a good matchup. Leading offensive team in the ACC against the number one defensive team. Tough shot for Ellington. He's had two jump shots. Neither one have been in much rhythm. Not within the offense. McClure, who does not look for his shot very often. Here's Zubek. He'd like to make Hansborough play defense. Zubik's lost a lot of minutes, has not played as well lately as he did earlier. Oh, Frazier, they push the ball, Frazier wide open, nobody back, and he drains it. Two threes for Bobby Frazier. Those are big. That is really big because their bench has not been productive. And now they get that kind of scoring off the bench, that's a major lift. Thomas. That angle didn't have a good angle. Here they go in transition. Run, baby, run. Ellington with McClure back. Ellington did a great job of protecting the ball with his body and getting the foul from McClure. You don't think there are athletes in the game? Watch this. Henderson skies the rebound. And look at the speed of Nolan Smith. Carolina with a 10-point lead here against Duke. Let's check in with Heather Cox. Heather. Well, you are seeing a much different Coach K on the sideline today than you did last week versus Clemson. Right before the game, he admitted to me the week prior to Clemson, he was suffering nerve damage in his neck, so much so that it was making him physically ill. He lost 15 pounds during the week and said, I just didn't have the focus that I wanted to have to mentally prepare my team during that Clemson week. He said this week he's feeling much better, and you can see much more animated up and down already in the early minutes of this ball game. I'll tell you, Heather, you want to see somebody that's focused? Deion Thompson. He's playing like David Thompson. He's one of the greatest effort to play in this league. I mean, there it is right now. Little jump shots wide open. 
He went through a period this year when he was not effective offensively. He's getting wide open look. Zubik doesn't even put a hand up in front of him. I he mean, and Bobby Fraser have already combined for 16 points. That's scoring you don't expect. I'll tell you one thing. He gets open looks like that. I think Mike Krzyzewski going to call Bristol, Connecticut, and have Jay Billis shipped out here to guard him. I mean, to defend him. Roy may want to bring Hubert Davis down here. What I love about both these teams, it's all about the team. They're so unselfish. Ellington misses that free throw. So unselfish. Always want to give up the ball. And it's all about winning. They have set such a standard, both these clubs. Hey, Tyler Hansbrough could be the first star to win four in a row in Cameron Indoor Stadium since the guy, the last guy to do it, Tim Duncan did it at Wake Forest. And he just continues to win as an NBA. Full court pressure, the kind of thing that just destroyed Duke against Clemson. Ineffective right here. You're right there. 22 turnovers in that oh. game. Only turned it over nine against Miami, who used the zone. Different styles. Shire back on the court. The first three-point shot that Duke has tried tonight. That's a staple in their arsenal. Yeah, they need that three. Out of guys like Shire and Paulus and Singler is capable of making it. Henderson. Larry Drew is in, and Drew travels only the second one. North Carolina turnover. Boy, Williams Hall of Famer has his Mike Krzyzewski. Both guys have programs with the kids. Integrity, graduate athletes. I think Shire in the warm-ups, he didn't miss one. And he's been really struggling shooting the ball. The last seven games has struggled. I don't believe in warm-ups. <laughs> Watch guys make everything and then can't hit one during the game and vice versa. Singler left alone. No. Here comes Ellington. Can he get a shot in the rhythm of the offense? Green forced that one a little bit. Got to go inside to the interior. You know it was an amazing stat last year. They beat Duke and Hansbro didn't go to the free throw line. That is so rare. That it's was unbelievable. One of, yeah, one of the real priorities of Duke in their scouting report was say keep Hansbro off the free throw line. Paulus and Shire have to make threes for them to win this game. That's their offense. Paulus made six in Chapel Hill last year to beat North Carolina. In North Carolina. Paul is pestering Drew. This is Hansbro. Goes baseline cutoff foul by McClure. I mean, Duke's offense has always been penetrate and kick out. I'm going to watch Polish right now. Was patient this year. Finally got himself back in the starting lineup. I started 105 games prior to this year. Lost the starting job. Smith was playing well early. It's pretty good when you got that kind of competition to practice every day. You betcha. Lob to Ed Davis. Davis comes in off the bench and gets a bucket. This guy is a rebounding machine when he's in there. Henderson. He'll draw a foul on Davis. You'll draw fouls if you have that attacking ability and you're aggressive offensively. Davis has been a positive guy rebounding and blocking shots. Talk about rivalry week right there. Hoyas and Syracuse, that place will be rocking up at the Carrier Dome. Georgetown struggling right now. And we'll be down there, all of us, the game day crew, Dan Schulman, Jay Phyllis, Hubert Davis, Reese Davis, Digger, Ohio State, Wisconsin, the general, Robert Montgomery Knight, who, by the way, told me last night on the phone as he misses the free throw, how he was so impressed with Memphis last week defensively and loved their freshman, Tyreek Evans, who I think right now would be my choice as the freshman of the year, followed by Willie Warren of Oklahoma. Duke down by seven in a fast-moving first half, 8.58 to go, and Henderson misses. Fraser with the rebound. Got to make those free throws, Mike. Roy Williams going as deep into his bench as he can. He has the lead on the road, being very smart about trying to rest his starters. Paulus reached in, got the steal, but kicked it out of bounds. And I'm not talking about it being hot for us, Vic. It's hot for the players Absolutely. on the floor. It was in the 70s today, and it becomes an oven in here. So the more guys you can use, and Roy likes to use a deep bench anyhow, the better off you're going to be. Fatigue could be a factor, but he's getting really positive play out of Fraser and out of Davis. Yes, he is. Hands broke. 
Brave it all. Oh, Gorsh. Sim foul. Henderson drew the charge. Henderson has been the do it all guy for Duke. Here he is defensively now rotating over. Good job defensively. Roy not happy with the call, obviously. He's not going to be pleased with that. He's oh, no, no. That's my All American, Tyler. That's the first on Hansbro. You know what's been interesting, Dick, is that people are not talking about Hansbro in the same glowing terms they did about him last year, and yet his numbers are virtually identical. I well, don't understand. Well, expectations also. It's like that star of stars. Right now, Blake Griffin's having a phenomenal year at Oklahoma, but I remember last year at this time, everybody was given the Player of the Year award to Michael Beasley, and when it was True. said and done, Tyler Hansbro got it. Well, that's two fouls on Hansbro. Is Roy Williams going to get him out? You know, many coaches, I think, panic with the two fouls and make that quick substitution. He's always been pretty good about not getting in foul trouble. I saw Rick Pitino the other day with Williams leaving him on the floor, and I couldn't agree more. I know Al McGuire used to say, hey, I don't want him sitting next to me to be an assistant coach. Paul is guarded by Fraser. 31-24, the lead still seven. Shire on the curl has a little runner. He's having a big night so far. That's a big plus for Duke. That's nine for Shire. Look at the hustle. That's one of the things that Paulus gives you. He makes all-out effort plays, whether they work or not. He inspires everybody. I'll tell you, Mike, he gets a lot of heat. This kid is an absolute team player. He's a hustler. He scraps. There he is, diving. Former football superstar as a quarterback. Brother now plays for the Tar Heels. Fraser wide open again. And Bobby Fraser, Three of them. who came into this game shooting only 22% from long range, has hit three threes. Singler back the other way. Trying to do the same thing and does. I'll tell you one thing. Warming up early might have been psychologically a big lift for Singler and Shire. Hey, Frazier's playing like Wolf Frazier. <laughs> he made three big threes here. Is this good or what? He hasn't made three big shots all year. No, he hasn't. But he's a clutch kid, too. Coming off that ACL surgery from a year ago, some kids it takes a long, long time to recover. And Hansbro attacked by the crowd after shooting an air ball. The intensity, emotion, the rivalry is so special. Look at that drive. So explosive. You got the Yankees, the Red Sox, Ohio State, Michigan football. Give me North Carolina and Duke. It doesn't get better than this, baby. 34 to 31. We've just gone under seven minutes. Thompson. What a lift you get when guys make threes, psychologically and every other way. It is such a plus. Roy was telling me before the game, he said, we got a big lift when Ellis to start making those threes against Miami. Shire again. No one came over and stopped him. He just kept going until he laid it in. Shire has 11. The lead has been cut to one. Thompson. And a foul. Thompson starting to forget to go into Hansbro. Somebody got introduced. They got the national player of the year. Presented by Cisco. This has been something. Number three against number five. Six twenty-two to go in the first half. North Carolina leads by a single point, Dick. You're talking about rivalries. Hey, Veritek and A-Rod right there. The Yankees and the Red Sox, certainly special. The Lakers and Celtics. They'll be battling baby this year again. The Buckeyes and Wolverines in football. Special, the maze and blue and gang. Hey, what about Gino and Beth Summit, the thousand lady? But this one right here, my friends, I'm a little biased because I've been up here with you, Mike, 30 years, sitting here calling these games. The intensity, the emotion, the passion, a miles apart great players great coaching it's always been special dick you're absolutely right dick with the ch uh, duke rather with a chance to take its first lead north carolina has been up by as many as 11 mcclure paulus 
Shire's on the bench right now. He's the guy who had 22 against Miami. He has 11 in this game. It's hard to believe that kid was not playing more earlier. He is absolutely a tenacious competitor. Nolan Smith was wide open, then hesitated and fired up an air ball. When you hesitate like that, you're probably better off to pass. Ellington on the run, no. North Carolina's gone cold. They've been able to contain Ellington. Look at that move. Look at that move. Well, he made up for the bad shot with a great move. Nolan Smith. He says, I want more playing time. Ian Paul is playing the devil right now. Oh, this place is electric, Mike, electric. Ellington, no. Thompson, knocked away. Great defense by Paulus. Both these kids and teams playing so hard. What a game. Singler. Holy cow. They're feeling it now. Mike Krzyzewski's got to like this momentum they have. They're making shots, something they've been struggling doing, shooting the basketball. Down by 11, now they're up by six. This game has an impact for number one seed, leadership in the ACC. Lawson. Oh, what a tough shot by Lawson. He got so, by a steal attempt, still had a hand in his face and knocks it in. He's so strong with the basketball, very physical when he attacks the basket. Great fate. Singler got it back. And his foul. He did a terrific job getting in triple threat position, facing the goal, to pass, shoot, to rebound. Take a look at Smith right now. Coast to coast, a little change of hands, a little spin, a little whirl, lay it on a glass. Oh, look at that spin. Graceful. Is that Barishnikov? I didn't know he's here. I didn't great, know Barishnikov's here. Great, great body control. Duke now shooting 68%. They are absolutely on fire. The first five minutes, they hit four out of seven. Since then, 13 out of 18, including the bombs. And now Mike Wood, part of this outstanding officiating crew, steps in and says, all right, boys, let's settle it down a little bit. Ball us off the inbounds pass. What a run by Duke. Shooting the basketball hides a lot of liability. Yes, Mike. it does. You start converting offensively, making shots. Paulus, that's a tough shot off the mark. And McClure with a reach over. That's three on McClure. Ty McClure's been an unsung hero in a Miami game at 13 rebounds and eight offensive rebounds. North Carolina and Duke, the greatest rivalry in college basketball. Oh, it is super, super ending, sensational, baby. 3.53 to go in the first half from Cameron Indoor. Duke by three. Danny Green will go to the free throw line. The 6'6 senior out of North Babylon, New York, who's averaging 13 and a half points a game. He's been such an asset with his offensive ability. He's been so efficient. Utilizing that three very effectively on the wing. Pretty good on the other end of the court, too. Tremendous shot blocker. Absolutely. He made some great block shots against Miami, which were a key. Shire kicks it outside. Henderson tries to get down the lane. A bump, no call. Paulus. Got it. That's another tough shot by Greg Paulus. He has eight points in the first half. He likes the big moment. I really believe that. Yeah, he, does, so he? he does like the big moment. Working so hard defensively. Paulus right steals it from Drew. And now a tie-up. Well, what a difference he has made. He was the reason they were able to win that game and come back from 16 down against Miami. Playing tough defense. Head on the ball. Good stance. Drive him, beat him, turn him. That's called DBT. You drive him, you beat him, you turn him. It's called what? DBT. <laughs> Drive him, beat him, turn him. We used to teach that when I coached. Did you years, really? Years ago. <laughs> years ago. So many 
so much easier coaching here than coaching. I'd rather have a BLT, thanks. <laughs> I don't blame you. The lead is four, 312 and counting. Zubek calling for the ball inside. You think of this rivalry, and there have been so many stars that we have witnessed. The super players in the history of the game of college ball have worn those uniforms. Boy, Dick, when you read in the notes that this is the 40th time they have faced each other when they were both in the top 10. We've probably done <laughs> two thirds of those exactly. games, thank goodness. Here's the lob to Henderson. Tried to make the tough catch and get it to Zubek, and then Zubek commits the foul. Tried to make that spectacular play with that back screen and try to free him as you look at Coach Kay's got the gold medal as well. Coach that great team put back a sense of pride. Louisville, Notre Dame. Can the Irish break that seven game losing streak? Brent Musburger, Bobby Knight, and Digger Phelps will be down there. Carolina will go back to the line seven out of eight tonight as a team. Davis only a 60% shooter, but he looked good on that one. Davis out of Richmond, Virginia. Good rebounder, shot blocker. He's been a force off the bench for them during the course of the year. Long arms. He's going to be a very good player. They got a great recruiting class. Well, he's at in. North Carolina. Yeah. They got a great recruiting class coming in. Many people say the best in the nation. Well, it's North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to he's repeat myself, but <laughs> you just expect it. And Duke's going to reload. They got two great kids That's coming for in next sure. year Plumley and Ryan Kelly. Paulus for three. Good rebound to Zubek. Shire for three. Nice rebound to Copeland getting some rare minutes. He's got to get minutes now without Graves. He's been suspended. Ginger gone. Zeller gone. Got to give him a big body on the interior. Ellington, who is 0 for 5 from the floor, make it 0 for 6. Struggling, Ellington. They've done a great job containing him because he's been one of the real hot players in the conference. Dick, in the last four or five ball games, Ellington has been getting a lot of wide-open threes because they try to double-team Hansborough. Exactly. Tonight, he hasn't gotten the wide-open threes, and he hasn't made anything. Henderson. He's made some shots. Yes, he has. Coach Patrick, I like your analogy of what he's broke down with Hansborough the interior. He's going to get you open looks on a perimeter. Ellington. Foul. I mean, the intensity here, Mike, we're up here, up in the booth, and you can just feel that intensity. It's riveting. Two on Zubek. Has a coach ever appreciated a referee's call with a foul? I don't think I so. don't think at the time. I think later when they go back and see the tape, they might say, well, grudgingly, yeah, that was pretty good. In and out. Having a tough time shooting. But these are terrific officials. Absolutely. And coaches have a tendency to see the game the same way the fans do with their hearts rather than their eyes. Why some people tell me tonight, all you talk about is North Carolina. You don't talk about us anymore to Dukies. Can you believe that? I mean, it's the people to hear what they want to hear. 45-41. Duke down by 11 at one point has come roaring back and has the lead here at home. Number three against number five, playing for first place in the ACC. Both clubs not holding the ball. This is single offense. I tell you, Mike, coming out early helped him. It really did. He was working on his form. They got some outstanding assistant coaches with Collins and Wojo. So does, when you look at North Carolina's staff with Holiday and Robinson. Lawson, nice anticipation by Shire, and he makes a pick. Duke is six out of nine from long range. McClure. Duke crowd wanted to travel. Green, nice job to pull up, but he missed the shot. One of the keys right now, why they're plus seven, they have contained that lethal backcourt of Lawson and Ellington. They've done a great job controlling them. 
Lawson hasn't been able to penetrate, and Ellington hasn't been able to hit it. Well, here's the way it works with coaches and officials. Oh, we're going to take a look here. Mike Krzyzewski, it's a love fest. Oh, look at Carl Hess. They love each other. What do you say? What are you doing now? What are you doing? No, 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 Johnny Green. I don't like that call. Oh, it's getting a little bit. Oh, now a little sarcasm as well. I wish I could remember you on oh, the sideline. I was the wackiest of all time. I am so lucky that there was no such thing as ESPN. I've <laughs> been in a mental institution. <laughs> Shire. Foul on Green, and that upsets the Carolina folks. Had a clear out, a little isolation. Shire, an excellent free throw shooter, now goes to that free throw line. North Carolina has gone cold. Hansborough, in case you're wondering, on the bench because of those two fouls more than anything. And North Carolina has made only one of its last eight shots. They haven't had a field goal in almost four minutes. And they're a team that averages in the SEC 92 points a game versus that defensive right. effort. Duke gives up 61. And Duke's three losses, they gave up 75 points a game. Their defense has been their staple this year. Their defense and their depth and ability to shoot the three. And that's what's been missing in the losses, the ability to shoot the three. On the last two games, they had big deficits at halftime. This time, they're going to go in that locker room feeling pretty good about themselves. 13 points for Shire. He is out of his slump. They're in a zone right now. They're zoning up. Somebody has to get on Ellington, and somebody better get on Danny Green because he can knock down the three as well. Green has nine. The lead's cut to six. Now Duke can play for the last shot. You know, Green and Ellington, their eyes will light up seeing a zone defense getting in those gaps and seams. Rivalry week's been special. You had really a barn burner last night. Florida, Kentucky, Kansas, Missouri. A last second shot by Taylor to win it for the Tigers. Last night, Jody Meeks. Will it happen again today? Tom. Oh. Yes, what a pass by Henderson. Great pass by Henderson. What a terrific job in body control in handling that ball to create the foul. Take a look at that pass. Thomas on the inside. Nice handle. Excuse me, I said Henderson. That was obviously Singler. Singler made the great pass, but also the job by Thomas hanging. Good balance. When you can make that pass with one hand off the dribble, That's that special. can really get somebody open. Yeah, you do it so quick. So quick. Thomas for a three-point play, no. They think the Gip Plumley next year is going to help him in that post. Well, oh, Danny terrific. Green hit the front of the rim. We had, on Capel. We had a terrific first half. A lot of more offensive efficiency. A lot of passion. See how close this is. Jeff Capel hit one that was shorter than this to win a game, but that was close at the end of the half. Our halftime score, Duke 52, Carolina 44. Welcome back to Wednesday Night Hoops, presented by Disney Parks and part of Rivalry Week, presented by Cisco. It's Duke on, on top at home. Here at halftime, 52-44. <laughs> Hi, everybody. It's been everything we expected and more. Duke at one point ticked down by 11. Now they're up by 8. Had to be doing something right. Well, they were shooting the ball so well, really playing effectively, making shots, 61%. But take a look here. When they rose to be number one, they were efficient in many areas. Defensively, they were doing a great job on a defensive end. They were stopping people. They were scrapping defensively. They were hustling. They were hustling like tonight. They're doing the same. They're hustling tonight. They're playing defense. They passed when they were number one. And tonight, they're passing. Look at the backdoor cut. And that's how they play to become number one in the nation. Let's check in with Heather Cox. Heather. Well, I talked to a very focused Roy Williams coming out of the locker room, and he said flat out, we played awful defense the first, the last 12 minutes of the first half. Any adjustments? And he joked, yeah, maybe we'll start diving on the floor, maybe sweating a little bit, which is hard to believe in this hot building. Now, as far as defense and Duke goes, they'd like to see them not get passive. The coach talked about the guys in the first four minutes have to be better in the second half than they were in the first half, especially.
especially with Carolina's main guys back on the floor. And Heather, during that stretch, Duke outscored Carolina 34 to 15 to take the lead. You know, Mike, stay in tune with these numbers. Numbers you don't see in the stat sheet as you see them look battling. Sing oh, it's a little single with a little elbow right there. With an elbow, that's a no-no. That's a no-no. But let me tell you these numbers right here. In the two losses, Lawson was nine assists, eight turnovers. In this game, he's three and three. That's not typical Lawson. If those numbers continue, it could be another number to the yell side showing the common denominator. When he doesn't play well, that machine doesn't play well. They have done a great job keeping him out of the lane where he is so efficient. Now let's see what the call is going to be. Are they going to hit Singler for a foul on the floor well, when that elbow hit Ansborough? There you see Tony Green made a motion with his elbow. I mean, there's no doubt there's the elbow right there, Mike. I mean, that's clear as can be. Clear as can be. Hansbro goes back, flinches, catches the elbow. There's been a lot of incidents this year. In fact, there's a big write up in USA the other day. Jay Billis did an article about some of the things taking place with elbows being thrown on the ESPN.com. A technical foul being called on Singler for the elbow. This reaction. I mean, this reaction. Now, I think what Duke would contend is that Singler is trying to grab the ball. His hand slips off and his elbow goes back. Of course, North Carolina is going to make the point that no matter what, Threw he got elbow. hit with an elbow. He got hit with an elbow. He's down on the ground. A lot of things happen when you're down on the ground. He tried to get people off him, but he definitely threw that elbow. And I don't think the official has any other choice no. to make that call. And a good job by Hansborough for not retaliating. Exactly. Creating a bigger problem. Yeah, or doing anything silly. So it's going to be a technical, and Green will shoot it. It's going to be a big moment in this game. It's an eight-point lead. So much tension. And that's the third on Singler because a technical also counts as a personal. That's where that becomes big, and he's been so effective here. Mike Krzyzewski's going to leave him on the court, and it will be Duke basketball. Another huddle job by the officials. Michael Wood, Carl Hess, Tony Green. Henderson to inbound, 1944 to go in the ballgame. It's 52-46. Duke came storming back after North Carolina had played so well at the beginning of the game and taken an 11-point lead. Well, Paulus played, has been terrific. They played so well because they shot 61 percent, Mike. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's just made, an incredible number. At the beginning, they made everything. And they've been struggling shooting the basketball in their recent games. Henderson was brilliant. He did it all in that first half. Played like a superstar. Shire, nice move to get inside. Head pump blocked. Got it back somehow. Missed again. And Duke basketball. Somehow Shire got the offensive rebound. Now he'll try a three. It was partially blocked by Thompson. Well, they were concerned with the shot clock, so he tried to get it up quickly. Lance Thomas got him the ball back out. Nice job by Thompson hustling out there. Here's the scoring that you expect to see. Hansborough and Ellington only four points apiece, and Hansborough goes out and shows you his range. So the Stars on one side delivering the Stars on the other side, not so far. Well, Hansborough's got to be able to go down in the post and do what he does well, wear people out, get to the foul line. Duke would love to see him stay on a perimeter. Shire kicks it out to Henderson. He'll try a three. Singler kept it alive and had it blocked, and there's a foul on Thompson. That'll be three on Deion Thompson. Excuse me, no foul. No, no call on Thompson here. Singler made a great offensive rebound. 
Good switching up on top by Duke, stepping out. They're going to slide Hansbro inside. Thompson a little short. They're going to call it goaltending. My mistake on that last possession. Singler out hustling everybody. Nobody got back defensively. Same thing happened to them. Roy was really upset against Maryland, who put 91 points on the board. He said they beat us in transition. Singler is playing possessed. He is playing possessed. I think he's tired of reading about how much of a struggle he's been in the last three games. They're on their feet at Cameron. The lead is back to eight. What a terrific job of getting up the court. That was reminiscent of the Boston Celtics and the Red Orbit after a score go down and get one quick. Singler with 14 points. Hansbro, who only had four points and three rebounds in the first half. Really surprised that Hansbro's not attacking the basket. Green picks up his second foul. The unexpected Thompson and Fraser combined for 19 points. I'll say it's unexpected. And Shire, who's been in a shooting slump until the last game, and Paulus really come through for Duke. So it's not always the number one stars. It's the other guys who step up. You said guys like Paulus like the big moment. You get opportunities because everybody keys on the stars, so it creates space. Thompson's gotten cold, though, from that early start, Mike. He was on fire the first five minutes of the game. That's what he's got to do, attack the basket. Yes, he That's does. That's what he has to do. Because they have nobody that can match exactly. him. Exactly. His power, his strength, it's not shooting jump shots. It's going to the basket. That's what's made him a player of the year. What's made him an All-American. 56-50. Singler cuts through two defenders, and right there to block it is Davis. Davis did a great job helping Hansbro out because Singler went right by Hansbro. Lawson missed a wide open shot, and Thomas and Davis tie it up. Boy, and they're really starting to wolf at each other a little, aren't they? Look at this right here. He goes right by Hansbro, but Davis is there with the great timing and helping his teammate out. That's what you call team defense, lending a helping hand to each other. What a block by the 6'10 freshman. Green trouble inbounding. Lawson. North Carolina will not win this game unless Elephant starts giving him some points, Mike. Davis in a mismatch underneath against Paulus. Green will try a three. There's Davis, and Paulus tied him up. What a job by a guard in a mismatch. He knew he couldn't stop him if he got a shot. Well, you know the reason he tied him up is because the 6'9 player ended up playing at 5'9 by bringing the ball to the floor. And that's a no-no. He made himself 5'9. Nine turnovers for Carolina. Boy, have we seen some plays in this game. I can't believe it, but this is unbelievable here tonight. Shire and Duke starting the second half the way they started the first half. Not real hot. Look at the job they're doing on Lawson. They're spit playing them. They played together in high school. A little switch. One of the few times he's been able to penetrate when he does that, you can't stop it. No, because he's like a runaway freight train. He's so strong. He and Smith play together with old kill as a steal. Great reach in and steal. Ellington. They got to get out. This is the first goal. That's his first basket, I believe. That's his first basket of the night. The guy that's been on fire. And it took a layup, albeit off of a great defensive play to get it. And that would make Roy Williams smile. Defensive effort. They really extend. They get a lot of backdoor cuts. McClure and Nolan Smith in the game off Mike Krzyzewski's bench. He's trying to do what Roy Williams did in the first half. Play give his starters a breather. Henderson. McClure saves it. Dangerous pass. Henderson, great body control. Missed it, but Singler is there. What a tip by Singler. Having a brilliant performance. Singler with 16. Left-handed tip. These two clubs, without a doubt, are going to be such factors come March. Green, offensive foul. Duke does a great job of that, rotating over, getting into the lane, taking the charge. What hustle here tonight. You talk about a hustle, Mr. Patrick. Oh. 
This is just spectacular. Green and Singler leading their respective teams as Duke leads by two. Bill Cower, who we saw about a week ago down at Wake Forest, is here. Charlie Rose, who does such great interviews, is here. David Cutcliffe, who is trying to revitalize Duke football and will, is here. He's doing a phenomenal job. I remember when he was at Notre Dame for a short period of time. Everybody was so impressed. I thought he got a raw deal at Mississippi. He did. The head coach at Mississippi, the offensive coordinator at Tennessee, coached both Manning quarterbacks. Like and he will do a great job here. Singler on the way in, stripped, and we've got a tie-up. Oh, look at this coach. Stoops in the house. Oklahoma, what a basketball team they got. Coached by a dookie, Jeff Capel, doing a terrific job with Blake Griffin, who right now would be probably my choice as the national player of the year if I voted today. And if you're interested in Oklahoma basketball right now, they're up on Baylor by eight. That's on ESPN2. There's the lob, Hansborough, great pass by Lawson, great communication between the two veterans. Well, they set that play up off the weak side, great eye contact. Pass Lawson. off to Carolina to come back, they've tied it at 58. You're not surprised, they got the best starting five in America. Connecticut. Singler. Connecticut's so physically gifted with to beat. He's worth 20 points just by being on the floor. Shot clock down to 10. Zubek on the bounce pass. Here's Singler. They're out of Duke rhythm. looks disorganized yeah. right now. They look a little out of rhythm right here. Singler against Hansborough. Backs out! And him a three! Are you kidding? It doesn't matter the way he's playing tonight. It was certainly disorganized, that offensive set, but Singler made up for it because he's been absolutely brilliant. What a great step back. Lawson, a brilliant drive for the bucket. That's his game. Attack the basket off the bounce. Smith, pull-up jumper. He says to his teammate, high school teammate, an old kill. Anything you can do, I can do better. Lawson says, you don't believe that. They played an old kill academy under Stephen Smith out of Virginia. There they are, Gordon. Lawson again, nice drive, foul before he got there. They played soccer as well. Did you know that? They played soccer no. together. Yeah, worked on their agility during the soccer. Look at right now. There's that spin, the backdoor cut, the lob over the top. Hasbro with the jam. Jason J.J. Reddick, 2,000. Wow, take a look how many he needs right there. Only 172 points shy. Averages 22 points a game. 2,769 is the magic number. Right Duke now, he, by three. he cares about one number. Win tonight. Yep. Fraser to inbound. Hansborough getting what will probably be a very brief rest. Fraser, Fraser did such a great job in the first half with those three big threes. Ellington, 14-footer, his second basket of the night. They need him to score. He came alive against Miami in the second half. He knocked down seven threes. But Duke's not going to allow him to shoot threes. They're going to get right up in his face. Exactly. Henderson. Smith, 16 feet. And Carolina with a chance to regain the lead. Here comes Fraser ahead to Ellington. Poor pass as he was out of control. Never had a Smith down the lane. Singler tries to follow. Foul on Singler. Out of control. That was a bad decision by Nolan Smith. Yes, sir. Out of control by Nolan Smith. Well, offensively had no rhythm to that possession at all. More rivalry week action for you on Saturday noon Eastern Syracuse Georgetown then at nine the Saturday primetime game Ohio State Wisconsin rivalry week this Saturday on ESPN. We'll all be down there in Madison Wisconsin the entire crew the game day crew. That'll be a must game for Wisconsin trying to keep their hopes bet alive. But it won't be 75 degrees. <laughs> 
Dump it inside. Ellington, that's the first open three he's had tonight, and he can't hit it. McClure tied up, lost out of bounds to do. You know, McClure is one of those guys we always talk about, the banger, the crasher, the guy you need on the floor. You can't have all shooters. you got to have some people to screen, to rebound, and he's one of those terrific kind of players. Duke clinging to a one-point lead. Oh, look at that screen. Nobody communicated. Ouch. Boy, oh, offensive foul, Paulus. Boy, Williams upset with that. Nobody communicated on the screen. Got away with a push-off, momentarily at least. Boy, good job by Hansbro. He's out Roy. on a guard. Look at Roy. He's rooted at... Oh, that's an unbelievable suit. That's not a Kmart special either, I can tell you that. That's an Armani. Ellington, Lawson. The McClure matched up with Hansbro. Hansbro come out of the perimeter. He's going to duck into that post area. Lawson got by Thomas. Thomas is there and fouled him. Lawson did a terrific job creating the opportunity for the foul. He is starting to really take charge here in that second half, offensively attacking the basket. Yeah, they lit a fire under him because he is penetrating in the second half when he didn't in the first. North Carolina last led 34-32. That was back in the first half. There's so many good point guards in America this year. You got LaVance Fields, an underrated guy down of Pittsburgh. Collison down there. UCLA. Tyreek Evans is playing a point for John Calabria. In Memphis, they haven't lost the game. LaVance Fields makes that team move. Oh, he, he really so unselfish. And then there's Curry, who to me is not a typical point guard. He's just a combination guard. Lawson and the heels have taken the lead 64 63 and Roy Williams doing a heck of a job he's trying to give Hansborough a breather every time he can if he gets the lead Hansborough's going to sit on that bench it's got to be so exhausting on the floor remember this Hansborough trying to go four for four here at Cameron Indoor Stadium Tim Duncan made that happen in his career at Wake Forest. North Carolina has cranked up the defense here in the second half. Yeah, I think Roy got in their faces. I don't think he was pleased at all with their defensive effort. And Duke did a brilliant job offensively executing. Paulus against Drew. Shot clock running down. Shire with a runner. No. Thomas offensive rebound and put it in. The position by Thomas. Came in with a big reputation out of St. Benedict's. Played for Danny Hurley, Bob Hurley's brother. Fraser with Paulus on him. Good switch stepping out. But that leaves Fraser open. He misses. Paulus tipped it but picked up by Thompson. And Fraser went down in the backcourt. Ellington with a big three. He's starting to light it up now, Mike. He's got three goals here in the second half. Had zero in the first half. Said earlier they can't win unless he puts some points on the board. Carolina by two. Henderson's been quiet here so far in the second half. It was brilliant in the first half. Hesitated, then missed the shot. How often do you see that? He was so tough in that first half, going six for seven. Ellington with a miss. The ball knocked away from McClure. Drew stumbled. And the basket good by Davis. Nice post move by Davis inside. Getting the positive minutes out of Davis and out of Fraser. Mike Krzyzewski not happy at all there with their defensive effort. This is why they call this game the greatest rivalry in basketball. Ten minutes, 20 seconds to go in the ballgame. 69 to 65. Carolina by four. In the second half, Paulus Henderson and Shire, no points. They have taken nine shots. They've missed them all. They were the stars in the first half, and Shire breaks that drought. Got that little baseline jump shot. They got to get some defensive stops. They haven't been able to handle Lawson. And you're not going to stop him when he's that deep. They're not handling Lawson. He's got that great change of direction, the strength. 
attacks the basket. He is playing brilliantly here in the second half offensively. Mike Krzyzewski trying to think of a remedy on how to match up maybe a zone defense for a minute or two to take away that driving ability. They played some zone against Miami and coming back they went to a zone trap. Well, Fraser, Ellington, and Green will light up like it's Christmas, won't they? Well, they would if they get gaps if you match up. They make play like a play like a man to man, and that you match up with those guys. I just mean for a minute or two to right. get them out of a rhythm. You don't want teams to get in a rhythm offensively. 71-67 heels over the Blue Devils. Henderson. Good help defense. McClure with a rare outside shot. No. That's not his strength, Mike. No, it's he's wide not. open, but there's a reason he's wide open. He's a rebounder, a defender, a screener. McClure, only his sixth three-point attempt of the year. He's made one. North Carolina will allow him to shoot that perimeter shot. I mean, he's a valuable player to the team, but that's not his strength. Hansborough back in. Clure trying to challenge him right now defensively. That's one of his strengths. Plays with his heart. Plays so tough physically. Thompson, who had such a terrific start to the game. Backing in on Singler, and Singler is playing with four fouls. He really can't challenge it. He's done a great job attacking him off the bounce right there. 73-67, North Carolina starting to establish its dominance again. Henderson for three, rims out. He's the shots here. that were falling are not falling now. Henderson cold here in the second half. Great Blocked play. by Henderson. He had 18 that second half against Miami. Shire, nice, pass. nice feed to McClure. Nice look by Shire. Boy, does Henderson have some serious hops or what? Oh, he can really bounce. He can bounce off the floor. Welcome back to the battle for first place in the ACC. Here is tonight's Cisco game track. Tyler Hansbrough, who leads the league in scoring, has been held to just 10 points. Kyle Singler with an outstanding performance, 19 points, four ties, four lead changes. North Carolina was up by as many as 11 in the first half. No, it's Duke great. came storming back, and now Carolina's returned the favor. Well, Singler playing so well. I know they told you he had four fouls, Mike, but he's got three, Singler. But I will tell you this. One of the keys so far is they're keeping Hansborough off the free throw line. That's why he only has 10 points. Lawson has done a tremendous job in the second half. He has been able to penetrate. This time he is fouled by Paulus. That's two on the senior. Take a look at the standings right now. Playing for number one in the conference. Clemson very dangerous. Wake Forest lost again today. They're a little bit of a slide. Florida State is really a solid basketball team. Virginia Tech very dangerous. I'll tell you one thing. There'll be more than four teams in the NCAA tournament this year versus last year. I think they're going to get at least six. Hansbro against the double team. Kicks it out to Lawson. Nice deflection by Shire. Henderson kicks it out. Shire for three. Thomas, no. Hansborough with a rebound, and he's fouled. Thomas had a point blank follow, couldn't hit it. And Duke 0 for 10 from three point range in the second half. The first six half, they hit six out of nine. Rivalries never die all week long. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Disney Parks, where you're invited to celebrate life's special moments. What will you celebrate? Krzyzewskiville, where it was in the 70s today, still quite warm as Carolina leads by four. Heather Cox, how warm is it down there? Well, everybody's saying it's at least 90 degrees down here, which is why you see Roy Williams subbing with as much liberalness as he can to try and keep those stars fresh. Yes, it was 70 degrees inside. Yes, they do have air conditioning in this building, but no, it hasn't been turned on all day. And after tip, the doors were closed, have not been open to let any 
Crosby's certainly trying to create a bit of an oven effect in here for the visitors. Hey, Heather, you're going to become a meteorologist. Hey, she's the future Al Roker. Unbelievable. we got to have weather reports here at Duke. Tyler Hansborough, number three in NCAA history as far as made free throws. He's a terrific shooter. Hits only one out of two, however. The lead has grown to five. You know, Duke can't win this game, Mike. I talked about it earlier in the game. Unless they made threes, they better make some threes or they're not going to win this basketball game. They're 0 for 10 here in the second half. Henderson's been really quiet. Double teamed and fouled from behind by Danny Green. That's when he's at his best, when he's attacking off the bounce. Four on Danny Green. Doubleheader rivalry action continues tomorrow night. Seven Eastern. Brent Musburger, Bob Knight, and Digger Phelps. Number seven, Louisville, takes on Notre Dame. Then at nine, number six, UCLA. Number 18, Arizona State. Thursday night showcase on ESPN. Henderson will go to the line. Created the fourth foul on Green, and that's big because they're not a very deep team, North Carolina. So you got to attack Green, whoever he's guarding. He's going to take him out for a moment, bring in Fraser. They wish they had him in the lineup. Mr. Ginyard, defensive stopper. He could play one of the perimeter guys like Shire or Paulus. He could play any of them. He could play even Henderson. He's one of those versatile defensive players. They're back, baby. This is what we wanted. A game to go down the end. A mailbox masher. There's that screen. Two man game. Lawson. Can't handle him. It's an MM no. mismatch. They Lawson can't handle got him. by Paulus. He has 14. Big one second half. One on one. He's been unstoppable. Here and comes Lawson on the run. Paulus gets back. And Lawson again. He uses that backboard so well. He's got that great explosive speed in the open court. Brilliant second half by Lawson. First He's half. Faster end to end than anybody in the game. There's some quick guys out there. I'll take him. You try to beat him. Give me Collison. Oh, what a tough off balance shot Henderson tried there. He is strong with the ball, Mike. That's his great strength. He not only has speed and quickness, but has great strength. Fraser to Lawson. Back door. Lawson drops it off. Paulus commits the foul to prevent the easy bucket. He's getting a little danger time here for Duke. Real danger time. Change the complexion quickly so you can knock down a three. They've got to hit the three-point exactly. shots. When the game started, North Carolina built its 11-point lead. Duke was not hitting the threes. Then they started, they got right back in it and took the lead. Now they're not hitting the threes again. Sometimes it's real simple. You don't make those shots and it's part of your offense. It's going to be a tough night. You go home with an L. And the other guy goes home with the W, Coach Patrick. Right on target. Our Disney Park moments of the game in this great rivalry, Dick. Paul, oh, you take a look at so many great moments in this game. They're unbelievable. In this game right here, there's that whirling drive by Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith comes to town, and there's Lawson. Should have passed the diagonal pass to Hansbro, the All-American, the P.T. Pier. Yes, Mr. Lawson, you should smile. Oh, Mickey Mouse will be happy. I love Mickey as my boss. When Mickey came aboard, the numbers got bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, we got all the bosses here tonight. Mr. Bodenheimer, our president, Mr. Skipper, Mr. Williamson, Mr. Steer. All the bosses are in the house. Is Mickey here? No, Mickey's not here. He's busy. <laughs> Thompson at the free throw line. He had a man out of Torrance, California. Got off to a great start in this ball game. There was a factor early in the game. He can make shots. Got to bring Davis in, a little defense now. Boy, Williams utilizing his bench. A minute here, a minute there, getting a rest. Lead back to nine. This is a big possession, I think. Oh, turnover. And Shire goes down, falls, and the pass whisks over his head. He, he and tripped. And Krzyzewski wanted a foul. He has a right screen in there. It was a little trip. That's why he went to the floor, went to the deck. They need a stop. They have been unable to stop the penetration of Lawson. Smith is in there. You have to feel for that very reason. 
He's familiar with him. Has that Wall Street for him. Played him every day in practice at a high school level. They were teammates. Smith the loss going head to head. Soccer teammates as well at Old Kill Academy. Shot clock down to nine. He feels confident right now with his game. Hansborough with the shot clock at three. Wow. Oh, what a tough shot. Right in front of the North Carolina faithful. What a big shot that is. That's a back break to put you up 12. With the shot clock running down to nothing, your All-American center drains a three. Shire has it knocked away, and here comes Lawson. Carolina trying to put Duke away right here. Lawson comes out with the basketball. Look at that spin move. Boy, smart decision by Hansborough. Well, he's got basketball IQ pretty good. He's been around four years. I tell you, when they're playing well, Ellington and Lawson, they're not going to be beat. Pretty when good, those two aren't guys, they? When they're playing well, when they're effective. Ellington with the left hand, no. Loose ball. Shire or Singler lost it, and boy, is the crowd upset now. Yeah, think about what they're trying to achieve with Hansbro. Right there, they're in his face. I mean, that's a little him every time, too. But he had the strength to be Nothing able to make but it. Net. And the bench loves it. I mean, he's trying to do something that's unheard of. During the Mike Krzyzewski era, when there's been nothing but brilliance out of Duke on so many consistent teams, he's trying to go four for four, winning on this floor. And green as well. Exactly. That would be a remarkable accomplishment under any circumstance. Well, more importantly, it would put him number one in the ACC. And right now, you look at the number one seed, you're looking certainly at Carolina, Oklahoma, Pittsburgh, and obviously Connecticut. Hey, Heather, what about Mr. Hansbrough? Well, he got some advice from how to handle the pressure from someone you'd never guess, none other than Duke's J.J. Redick. Perhaps that violates the basic tenets of this rivalry. But J.J. said, be selfish with your time, Tyler. Be selfish with your emotions. You can only give so much to other people. Redick added, as weird as this may sound to ACC fans, I hope Tyler has a fan. Fantastic senior year. I can't think of anybody better to hold the ACC scoring record. What a great compliment from Reddick to Hansborough. Tells you what, what kind of kids both of them are. You know, both dedicated collegians love wearing their college uniform, representing their schools with a great deal of pride. Every possession becomes important now. Ellington, that's his kind of shot. And what a great block by McClure, who just flew at him. Came out of nowhere. We got a piece of it. Time now going down to that clock. We're under the five-minute mark. There's McClure with the block shot. Nearly got the save as well. Duke has gone without a field goal nearly four minutes now. You know, credit North Carolina defensively. We're doing a heck of a job in the second half. McClure nearly gets the, gets the steal. Smith commits the foul off balance. They don't get a lot of credit many times with their defensive ability. But in this second half, they have come out with purpose and have really challenged Duke. And that's why Duke has not made a three in the second half. We hear about their offensive proudness. I mean, they average better than 90 points a game. Well, that's what people see. But a lot of their offense is based on what they can do on defense. Mike, I can't even imagine if they had all the parts that were on oh. that roster to start the season. With Seller and Ginger, with the rotation they could have had, it would have been unbelievable. Lawson knocks down the free throw. It's 84 to 71, and it's getting dire for the Blue Devils. They are going to need to hit threes, and a lot of them, to make a comeback in this game as Carolina is starting to dominate. 19 for 22 on a free throw line, North Carolina versus 6 for 9 for Duke. Big edge there. See, they really match it up on the shooters. They're coming out extended defensively. Duke doesn't have a lot of post presence inside. They don't have that balance. They have some depth, but their people are all basically perimeter players. Henderson, that's about the fourth time we have seen somebody slip and go to the ground. That tells you how the humidity is so high in here because it's so warm. I think both clubs will be over in 
Greensboro for the early rounds of the tournament, which means you don't have to get in a plane and you can go to the Sweet 16 without really traveling. I think there's no doubt both these clubs will be in Greensboro. Interesting that Mike Slive, who's the head of the uh, selection committee out of the Southeastern Conference, he's RPI. The, the commissioner. Talking about trying to keep teams closer to home because of the economy. I think that's a wonderful move on also his said, part. He said forget about the RPI. He wants to get the VBDI to fight that ball dorm <laughs> index. McClure with a steal. 4-12 and counting. They better push the ball and look for some threes. Try to get some screens. Can't get any post presence. Singler. Boy, is Carolina doing a great job defensively. I got some solid minutes thus far out of Fraser and out of Davis off that bench. This has been the start to me in the second half has been Lawson. He's been the guy that's really made right. it happen for them. Killing some clock here. Lawson quicker than Singler. How many layups has he made in the second half? Once he gets you on his hip, it's over. He is so quick. Look at him attack the basket, Mike. He is so quick to the goal. <laughs> Stewart's got to be enjoying, especially the second half by the Tar Heels of North Carolina. They have been brilliant, particularly this young man, Ty Lawson. 16 of his 20 points have come in the second half. He has penetrated one possession after another. They can't stop him. His dribble penetration and his ability to complete the play. You know what separates him from a lot of guards? He can complete the play at the end. A lot of guys can penetrate, but they can't finish. 14-0 run by North Carolina. Duke has failed from three in the second half. One out of 11 from long range. They have done a phenomenal job defensively here in that second half. Roy's got to be so pleased with this second half performance. Dick, tonight side by side brought to you by Cars.com. It's the point guards. Well, you see Lawson's numbers right there. Paul has started off hotter, but he has done a great job with his penetration ability, his upper body strength. He can finish. When that backcourt's playing well, they're the best backcourt in America when you throw Lawson and Ellington. Well, a lot of the energy has gone out of this building in a great North Carolina run. When you can come on the road, there is Shire for three. When you can come on the road, you're not talking about just going anywhere to play. This not you're Cupcake talking City. about coming to this building to play. This is not Cupcake City. And they're trying to go four for four in the last four years. Ty Lawson. He's been a runaway freight train to the basket. Look at his upper body strength. Puts the ball on a glass really well. Has a great feel for where he is on the court. He knows where he is. He knows how to suspend in the air to complete the play. Oh, it's been special, though, Mike. It's been another great night. We've had some brilliant plays here tonight by both clubs, but this North Carolina team is just too good. They're just flat out too good. You always want to judge a team on how they are playing when they play at their best. And when North Carolina plays its best, you have to wonder if you played a five-game series with somebody, they're going to win four out of the five. Oh, without a doubt. But in college basketball, have one bad night and lose yeah. that one. You don't get to do it's that, lights do you? Out. Connecticut and Carolina would be one heck of a matchup. To beat is worth 20 points. has become such a major factor. Green. Versatility got four fouls. To beat in Hansborough would be pretty interesting, especially after the things that to beat said about him. He blocked shots like you can't believe. I didn't know to beat said anything about Hansborough, did he? I know Harry Goody, but I didn't know about he got uh, He got Hansborough in the same conversation. Oh, he did? But he's a good kid. He really is. He's only been playing about four years. Jim Calhoun's club just keeps getting better and better. Another big win today. Smith knocks that one down. It's a 13-point ball game. And North Carolina will work on the clock every possession. Lawson against the double team. And a good good job throw. to get it up. They're good on a free throw line, so that makes them extra dangerous exactly. late in the game. Spread the court. 
nobody out there that you would mind sending to the free throw line. That's, an area, that's an area he's really improved on. Attacking the basket off the bounce, Ellen Jim. When he arrived, he was more or less a stationary jump shooter. Shire Thomas with a rebound. Thomas with a miss, and he's fouled. Tomorrow night, join Brent, Coach Knight, and Digger Phelps when number seven Louisville takes on Notre Dame. It's the Thursday night showcase on ESPN. Tell you, Herring Goatee really struggling playing a good Louisville team. Is the big three. Wow, that's a big three. Musburg and Knight and Phelps. Wow, that's not me. No room down there. Those three guys, but Herring Goatee's better be super, and so is McElarney. They got to have a great performance to break a seven game losing streak against a quality team in Louisville. Hey, Mike, I know somebody wishes they were here, obviously. Uh, I got a note from. Young fella passed away. Unbelievable. He died so young from colon cancer. Duke medical graduate, medical school, Dr. Malkow. His mom, Sharon, sent me a note and said, how much Steve loved Duke. We sent our sympathy out to the family. Also, I want to thank Certainly Jim Frauenberg's here. He's from our Buckeye check cashing company. He gave $100,000. Mike Krzyzewski and I got him to give $100,000 to come to this game, to the V Foundation. He's here today having a blast, and we can't thank him enough for his generosity. Lawson double team. They'll call a timeout with 2.08 to go. The lead still 14. Hey, what about Brett Favre retiring since it's now Blowout City here? What do you think, buddy? Should have happened a year earlier. I hate to see him go, though. I love yeah. Favre. I would have loved to see him finish as a Green Bay Packer, just like I would have loved to see, you know, players stay a long time. I'd hate to see Derek Jeter ever put another uniform on other than the Yankee uniform. Well, that kind of thing doesn't happen anymore. You know, well, it used to be. Uh, I mean, when we were growing up, you would see guys that would have a 20-year career. It was always with the exactly. same team, especially if you're a superstar. And now, you know, guys play a few years, and it's off for the Bucks somewhere else. Yeah, I, I know that. It's all about, you know, instant make the Bucks. But I, I'd hate to see Jeter put another uniform That'd on. That'd be bad. He is absolutely a Yankee at heart, and you'll never see his name on any steroid list. And, you know, you're talking about A-Rod. We were talking before the game with Mike Krzyzewski. Mike knows Alex really well. We had him here. In fact, Brent Musburger and I had him here for a basketball game when he was out at Seattle. And he's got a chance to redeem himself, but he's got to really make some real commitments. I think the first commitment is get out there and help the youth and make some donations and charity and give up those 156 homers in Texas. Ellington. North Carolina on their average of 92 points. They let to go right to the goal. Has not been able to score here in the second half. Henderson is having a brilliant, brilliant month, though. Lawson lost it on the way in. North Carolina does not need that kind of possession. They just need to work on the call. Oh, you don't need that. And he's fouled. That is really silly. That is not smart basketball. He's a smart kid, understands how to play, Fraser. Going to stop the clock and put him on the line for three. And all Roy Williams could do was hold his palms up to the sky. Like, what are we doing? Yeah, that, that's really not smart basketball there. Now with that lead. Last night, what about Kalaitis? Had three opportunities, had a brilliant game, 33 points, goes to the line, has three free throws, could tie the it game. It was unreal, up. wasn't it? Yeah, and he unfortunately could come up, and Jody Meeks had made a big shot. And that Missouri game, the kid Taylor made a big shot in the rivalry weekend to beat Kansas. Well, say Shire makes the next two, the lead's in single digits. We've seen Duke pull miracles before, haven't we? Well, that would be a real, real miracle, my <laughs> friend. You would have a heck of a scoop if they could come back and pull this one out. It's happened, though. It's happened. Dean Smith was a master at that. He was a master in pulling some miracles. Two out of three. Loose ball. Paulus, nice job to keep it alive. Signal in the lane. Oh, jeez. They're not going to back away. They're not going to quit. You know that. North Carolina got a little bit sloppy right now. Going to spread the court. That's smart right there. Good basketball mind. And Lawson, bring the ball back out. Go to the Foul free throw. on Henderson. Make some free throws. Oh, 
Hey, we got Duke and Carolina, my friends. A lot of real weird things could happen. Duke <laughs> and, and Carolina. I mean, don't go away yet. But he converts this. This really hurts. But that three-point shot real quickly can get you right back in the hunt. You have to foul and hope. And Ellington, terrific free throw shooter. Hits the first, he'll get another. Well, I love your word you utilized, hope. You gotta hope. But you gotta have hope in everything. You gonna sing that? <laughs> He's not the guy you want on the free throw line if you're Mike Krzyzewski. But if you're Roy Williams, you like seeing him on the line. Well, they got all great free throw shooters out there now. Duke has to try to trade three for two. That's not going to help. What you got to do, basically, if you're North Carolina, just extend defensively, make them have to drive to the goal. Hope 15 Duke turnovers tonight. Only had nine against Miami, but Miami played a little zone. At 22 against Clemson. Loose ball saved. He got bumped. He's going to go to yep. the line. Foul on Shire. What a second half Lawson has had. Brilliant. I mean, I can't salute Tyler Hansbro enough and the seniors the four years in a row. To put it, it's unbelievable to be able to come here to Cameron Indoor Stadium four consecutive years. It is a remarkable accomplishment. And now our most valuable player of the game brought to you by Sonic. Ty Lawson, 21 points. More importantly, 17 in the second half when North Carolina came from behind to regain the lead and then started to dominate. What were they down by? They were in the first half. They were down at least were double down by eight. By eight, got up to eight, yep. Lawson has been, without a doubt, the star of stars. He's been a flat-out PT peer here tonight, a prime-time performer. There are certain things certain players have to do. Lawson is ineffective if he doesn't penetrate. Ellington is ineffective Can't if he shots. can't hit three-point shots. And they did that tonight. Smith battling inside, although Ellington really an ineffective scorer this evening. Well, second half he put on some points. There's Hans Brill right now, the rivalry start for him. Here's his first win on this floor. Tyler Hansbro getting a chase. He's excited. He got a W at Cameron Indoor Stadium against his buddy JJ Reddick. And then it was another opportunity as they won that with 83 76. Wow. Look at this here. Longest win streaks at Cameron. Look at Wake Forest up there. Wow. That's Mr. Duncan. Take a look at that. You got Ralph Sampson there on the bottom. I tell you, there's been some great players in this series, some great matchups. And you and I have had the privilege to sit here. Haven't we? You know, the one thing, Duke, if you look at their makeup of their team, if they're not making threes, they run into a dilemma because they have very little post presence. Where do they get exactly. any post presence in terms of scoring down in a box? Lawson has gone from ineffectual in this game to being the leading scorer with 23. Talk about balance. Green and Ellington both have 15. Hansborough and Thompson both have 14. Well, that's exactly what Roy Williams spoke about in today's local papers, that he wants balance. Well, my friend, did he get balanced hey, tonight? Yes, that's as balanced as you can get when you look at that distribution of the point totals. A terrific second half performance by North Carolina. And Heather spoke about it, how Roy Williams was not pleased and made some adjustments at halftime to get them to challenge and play defense. And what was the quote? Heather said, they better start to sweat, Roy said. They better start to sweat. Something we don't have to worry about. No. This will be the eighth straight North Carolina win this year. In a conference, an ACC conference play. Eight in a row after losing the first two to BC and the Wake Forest. Wake Forest has got to regroup. They seem to be in Boy, struggle okay. city right now. Follows on Ellington with 34.9 to go. The one thing North Carolina 
does not want to do is commit a foul right now. The ACC standings, North Carolina will go up one game on Duke if this holds. Duke will fall into a four way tie for second place with three losses Clemson FSU and Virginia Tech. Well you know you can get back in first but now they got a tough task when you look at North Duke they got to go down to Chapel Hill and beat them in North Carolina which they've done. In fact when you look at this rivalry five of the last six times the visiting team is one. Now remember when they play them again do you think there'll be a little emotion. <laughs> it's going to be the last game for Tyler Hansbrough in terms of regular season at Chapel Hill. And could be the last game in Chapel Hill for a whole slew of North Carolina guys. Exactly. But I mean, you think there'll be some emotion, especially when you think yes, about sir. what Hansbrough's achieved. And by then, he could have passed J.J. Redick or could do it Absolutely. in that game as wow. the number one scorer of all time. But you know what happens so many times? There's so much emotion, so much passion that you lose a lot of energy. It just saps you. Well, didn't we see it down here with J.J. Redick's last game? Absolutely. Yeah, You're right. we saw it. He was so keyed up Absolutely. to play well in that game. Well, you're emotional too. You're going to speak to the crowd after the game. Not sure what this discussion is about. They got a trip at Miami. I'm going to tell you something. Frank Hates Club has really played well. Lost that tough game here. We're up 16 and allowed it. They blew out. I mean, blew out Wake Forest by 27. That Virginia Tech game is going to be very interesting yeah, in a, Blacksburg. Seth Beaver's got a pretty good club. Last year I thought they got a raw deal. I thought they belonged to the NCAA tournament based on their record in the ACC during the regular season. I think this is a clock problem. Take a look at Duke's upcoming schedule. But it is a program that's really struggling big time. St. John's not getting people in Madison Square Garden. They'll get them when they play Duke, though. That place will be packed. And he's Rematch worked. against Wake Forest. And Roberts, the coach down there, has worked so hard. He's really doing everything the right way. I just can't seem to latch on to the super high school player down at St. John's. Hansborough hits the free throw. And they have made the adjustment 34.6 to go in this game. Heels in control. Hands pro two for two. Such a great teammate too. All the players love playing with him. He's all about the team. That's a guy out there all ego. Lawson to make it 100. Why not? Why not Lawson? He's been the star. He gets the trophy tonight. Singler back the other way against Hansbrough. Can't hit it but will draw a foul. The last time the Blue Devils gave up 100 against UCLA in 2005. You know, we're talking about a team that leads the conference defensively. Defense. And here it is showing you the offensive pot potent attack that they have when you look at North Carolina. They come on a road. They come on a road. Does it matter? You know, Mike Krzyzewski said, if you're good, it doesn't matter where you play. If you're good. And that's really true. I mean, if you're really good. I mean, look at Michigan State, the way they're playing right now on a the road. They're 6-0 in, in the Big Ten on the road, and the conference is so much better now than it's been. Playing without one of their stars, too. Raymond Morgan, Tom Izzo's club, we'll see them uh, uh, next Tuesday. I have a game down there with Purdue. We've got a tough break playing without Robbie Hummel. Hansbro foul with 21 4 on the clock. This takes an eternity in the last minute or two. It must seem like an eternity to the Blue Devils. You talked about their defense. They played sensational defense in the first half. They didn't allow Lawson to penetrate. Ellington wasn't getting wide open shots, and Hansbro was not a factor. What else do you need to do against North Carolina? And that's why they were able to go in on a plus side. They made threes in the first half. They did everything that they had to do if you're doing a scouting report and analyzing what they would have to do to beat North Carolina. Absolutely. They achieved that in the first half. Second half, that's why you play two halves. It's been all North Carolina. Dominant. You got to take your hat off Dominant. to the heels and the coaching staff. Absolutely. Roy Williams. 
for the way they manipulate that bench tonight under some very warm circumstances down on the court. He saved his starters as many minutes as he could. Dominant. Both coaches fit their programs to perfection. Exactly. When you look at Mike Krzyzewski, he fits the profile of Duke, and Roy Williams fits that profile down in North Carolina. Two Four superstars. years in a row. North Carolina has come to Durham, and Danny Green and Tyler Hansborough will leave as the first North Carolina players to come in here and win four in a row at Duke. The final score, North Carolina 101, Duke 87. Stay tuned for SportsCenter for more on our game. You can join us over on ESPN News. For Dick Vitale, this is Mike Patrick, along with Heather Cox. Thanks for watching, everybody. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.